is born spiritually blind. Amen. Everybody is born spiritually blind. I want you to pay attention to me carefully. And you'll get something out of this. Everybody is born spiritually blind. Because of the sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. it resulted in what is called the fall mm -hmm. of man. And from that time forward, death entered the world and everybody that was born into the world was born spiritually blind. Now, spiritual blindness is the inability <laughs> to comprehend, understand God and the things of God. And let me define it once more. Spiritual blindness is the inability to comprehend and understand God and the things of God. In other words, you are born into this world and the subject of God is foreign to your human makeup. Even though God has created you in his image and after his likeness. Yes. So if you notice, when you grow up and when you are, let's say, let's say, a teenager, the subject of God really is far into you. Because you are at the stage where you don't understand who God is. You don't understand anything about God and the things of God, so therefore the subject of God is foreign to your maker. Even though you are God's creation. Because God created you in his image and after his likeness. Everybody Amen. was born spiritually blind. It's not just a black thing. It's not just a Caucasian thing. It's not just an Asian thing. It's not a black thing. It's not a white thing. Everybody was born with this problem. You were born spiritually blind, unable to understand and comprehend the things of God. Even though God created you, in his image and after his likeness. But yet when you were born, the subject of God was foreign to your human makeup. Do I have a witness here? Now it is imperative for you to understand that spiritual blindness is not going to go away on its own. Because spiritual blindness was designed to stay on you all the days of your life until you do something about it. Now this is the reason why many people don't get the opportunity to go into heaven because they never dealt with the issue of spiritual blindness. You see, the problem with spiritual blindness is after you have lived with it for so long, it just seemed normal, mm -hmm. and you don't see it as an issue. Right. I wish I had somebody that was going to pray for you. Yeah. You had the problem, and some still have the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I didn't really realize that was spiritual body. I had no clue. I had no idea that I was Spiritual blind and did not understand God and the things of God. Now, when a person is really spiritually blind, just the hearing of God, the name of God, just hearing the name of Jesus Christ, it irritates people. And that's why you find people saying that I don't believe that there is no God because the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And the reason why that statement is made is because that person is spiritually blind. And they have not dealt with that issue. Everybody in this room, at one time, you were dealing with the issue yes, yes. of spiritual blindness. Now, Pastor Reese, 
you just said that you didn't realize that you were spiritually blind. When did you come to the knowledge and understanding that you were spiritually blind? I came to that knowledge when I was born again. You have to understand that when a person is born again, being born again, what it does, it locates you. It shows you where you are. You don't really realize where you are sinfully yeah. until you have a meeting with Jesus. Yeah. For the Bible says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, you are changed and all of a sudden you begin to understand where you are in life. But that was I realize that was spiritually blind. And in fact, the matter is, I was born with the problem. You were born with the problem. The inability to comprehend and understand the things of God. That's why God calls preachers. That's why God calls teachers to teach and expose this issue. Everybody has the issue, but everybody don't really realize that they have the issue. And the thing is, this issue of spiritual blindness is not going to leave on his own. Right. I wish I had somebody that's going to preach. Now, Pastor, if it's not going to leave on his own, then oh, what's going to happen? It's my responsibility to deal with this issue. And until I deal with this issue, I will never understand who God is and who Jesus is. I won't understand anything about the Holy Spirit. So I have to deal with this issue because I was born with it. Right. That's why the Bible said, "Any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, old all things have become new." So that God has provided, if I can say that God has provided an antidote <laughs> to spiritual blindness, and that's how come the devil fights against the antidote. Yeah. What is the antidote? It's getting you to know yourself from Jesus. Amen. He is the antidote, yes. and when you call upon Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus come in. And he does a miracle on the inside of you. And when he turns you loose, all of a sudden now, you wake up and say, wow, man. Wow. I was on my way to hell with my eyes wide open. But all of a sudden, I can see clearly now. Why can I, how can I see clearly now? Because he removed spiritual blindness from me. I'm not talking about physical blindness. I was not born physically blind. Right. I was born being able to see good, 20 20 vision. But that's natural. Mm -hmm. But I was spiritually blind, that's in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to ever mm -hmm. live according to the ways and the will of God, I've got to allow Him to deal with the spiritual blindness that I was born with. And not only Affect blacks, it affects everybody. Yes. It affects whites. It affects Caucasians. It affects everybody has the problem. Right. For the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Adam's son. His son is the antidote for this issue. Right. And until yes. you call upon Jesus, that problem still exists. Mm -hmm. and let me say it again. It's not easily detected. As a matter of fact, it's not going to leave on its own. It's there to stay. And only God has the power to move it. And I'm going to say this, and I, I had this toward the end of the message and what have you, but no spiritual blind people are going to go to heaven. That is an issue that must be dealt with in your life. Amen. Amen. And people are not dealing with this issue. That's how come we have so much chaos in the world. Yes, Lord. So much chaos off up in the church and what have you. Yes. Now, Pastor Rich, you mean to tell me that spiritual blindness is in the church? Of course. Yes, yes. Of course. Oh, spiritual people wanting to usurp authority over the pastor. 
People want to come in into the church and do what they want to do and whatever. All of this stems around spiritual blindness. It has to be dealt with. And you can't deal with it on your own. Now listen to me. A spiritual blindness is an issue that you can't detect on your own. I, re I repeat that. This is why God has provided the gift of salvation. And the gift of salvation is the only thing that has the power to cause you to be able to see, comprehend the things of God. You see, God in his mercy, he understands how spiritual, he understands the depth of spiritual darkness, spiritual blindness. He understands the depth of it. He understands how deep it runs. He understands that his people don't have the power to deal with it. He understands all of this. And this is why he took the initiative to call a day and anoint men to preach the gospel so that this issue can be exposed. Now if men will listen and adhere to the word, God then will be able to come in and remove this issue and you finally will be able to understand that God is creator and God is the savior of this world. Do I have a witness? No. God is not going to force himself on you. Right. He, even though he understands that you have a problem. God is not going to force himself on you. Right. He understands that you have a problem. This is why the church is in existence. And when I talk about the church, the church is the people of God. Right. And the people of God come to a building that we call the church. And the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. So God understands the importance of gathering together to hear the word of God. Because there is power in the word of God. So I remember, you know, prior to, to really getting saved, you know, I, I, would, I would go to, go to, church, go to church from time to time. And... Uh, I would be sitting up in the church while the man preaching. And I don't know why I see like everything that he was saying and people talking about me. <laughs> and you know, it was, it was so it was so real. Yes, I would be looking around swaying. And why is this man talking about me from the pulpit? He don't even know me. Right, right. right. Why, why are they talking about me like this? Not me be sweating. You know, and, and, and I would be glad when the service is over. I shake my hands and leave and what have you. Right, right. But what I'm saying is. It takes the anointing. It takes the power of God to help you to understand where you are. Because a liar feels like lying is okay. Right. A person that 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 run to do evil things think that is okay. A person that complains all the time thinks that is okay. A person that curses all the time, think that's okay. But when you receive Jesus Christ, he comes in and he does a miracle on the inside of you, and all of a sudden now you can see that cursing is not right, lying is not right, complaining is not right, running to do evil is not right. What happened? I became a new creation in Christ because God in the conversion located me, and now I can see and understand where I was. And where I was, God did not want me to be. Amen. Are you listening to me? I was spiritually blind and couldn't see anything. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody has a problem. And people that you, you know, Clarice, they got the problem. Such the people that you know got the problem. See, they don't really realize that they got the problem. And there you are. You spiritually blind. Don't do that. Because what it's going to do is going to create a problem. You didn't know you had until God did something to you. Amen. Amen. And there you are. You spiritual blind. You going to hell. Don't do that. Right, right. 
<laughs> because you're speaking from the perspective of light. Amen. And they're trying to comprehend what you're saying from the perspective of darkness, and it doesn't work. work. Right. Amen. So your responsibility is to just pray. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. People that you know are just, just, just as spiritually blind as they can be. People that my wife knows, people that I know, are spiritually blind. They don't know it. See, first of all, they're going to stay there until they get under some man of God. You mean to tell me, preach, I got to go to church, you know, to deal with this? You know, I'm not saying God said it. God said the gospel is the power of God's salvation to him that believe it. So why are you rejecting it? You're rejecting your ticket to heaven. Amen. See, because you and your spiritual blindness ain't gone. Hmm? You and your baggage ain't gone. You got to leave that baggage back here. Amen. In other words, it's attached to you. Yes. It's attached to you and you don't even know it. Right. Right. See, and somebody trying to tell you that's attached to it, all you're going to do is get mad. Right. See, but that's how come God got to come in do a miracle on the inside of you, and all of a sudden now you can see and understand that, man, something was wrong with my eyes. Yes. Yes. And now you can see that God loved you and he's not your enemy. Yes. How come you think that God is that? God is your enemy. Amen. Die that you might live. He went to hell so that you might not have to go. So how in the world can you think that God is your enemy? Right. He's not your enemy. He's, he's, he's your father. Yes. He's your savior. Yes. He's your mediator. He's your advocate. Mm -hmm. He's your high priest. He's your intercessor. He's your mediator. He's all of that and above. Mm -hmm. Amen. And some people don't believe that he exists. The reason why they don't believe that he exists, go back, Pastor Mr. tell me why they don't believe that he exists. Spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Born with it. But now, see, God knew that you were going to be born with a sin. It happened in the Garden of Eden. You can trace it back there. The sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden, they opened the door to death. And from that point on, everybody that's born into this world are born spiritually blind. God knew that. But God said, okay, in order to have an antidote for this problem, I'm going to allow my son to go into that world, go into my world, rather, down the cross, shed his blood, go down into hell, stay for three days and three nights, be resurrected from the dead, ascend back to heaven, and be seated on my right hand, and then I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. And everybody that received what my son did, they're going to be able to see and understand that they were born spiritually blind, and all of a sudden those blindness that's on their eyes are going to be removed. Amen. Blindness on their eyes. They got to be removed, and you can't remove them on your own. You, you, you can't do it on your own. No, not at all. At all. You have to have some help. Thank you, Jesus. Dude, if, now if I gave you a pad and paper, I said, I want you to think back the day when you acknowledged that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I want you to write down everything that you can remember that took place. See, most people couldn't do it. See, because it takes a lifetime for you to understand what happened to you the day that you got born again. See, you, 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 you. what happened was, you received the Holy Spirit, you were sealed, you received the authority to use the name of Jesus Christ, and now you have the authority to, to operate the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you have been authorized and blessed by God. I mean, there's so many things that happened the day that you were born again. Your, 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 your vision, your spiritual vision was open to God. Prior to that, you couldn't see and understand who God was. That's how come you were against God. That's how come you ran from God. Yeah. You remember your good friend who would come to you after you got saved? Honey, you going to you want to go to church with me? No, I don't want to go to church. <laughs> Ain't nothing in church for me. Why did you make a statement like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, no, I don't want to go to church with you. <laughs> I don't want to go to no prayer meeting. I don't want to go to no Bible study. Ain't none of that stuff for me. Why would you make a statement like that? Right. The reason why? 
something wrong with your spiritual vision. Mm -hmm. And until God himself do something about it, you're going to remain that way. And guess what? You live, you, you live and die, and that baggage, spiritual blacks, they're going to heaven. See, until you deal with that stuff here, you ain't going to heaven. Is that okay? Now, when a man chooses to ignore God, a good sound preacher, they close the very avenue that God is trying to use to expose the issue of spiritual blindness that has plagued them all of their life. And you need to understand that you ain't going to heaven with that baggage. You're not going to heaven with that baggage. Now, I want to give us the principle here so that we can all see and understand the message that I'm trying to get across to you. I want to give you a principle, and it comes out of the Old Testament, as a matter of fact, in the second book of Kings. It's a principle here so that you can understand how God has to step in to open a person's eyes so that they can see what's already there. Even though, because their eyes are closed spiritually, they can't see what's already there. So a lot of times God has to step in and open one's eyes so that they can see what God would have them to see. Now, the king of Syria and the king of Israel. The king of Syria, he wanted to go to war with the king of Israel. And the king of Syria, he would set up ambushments against the king of Israel, but he never would be successful. And the reason why, the prophet Elisha would go and tell the king of Israel that the king of Syria has set up an ambushment here so you're not to go that way. So not only did Elisha save the king of Israel and his men, not just one time, not two times, but three times, but at many times as were necessary. The prophet Elisha would go and tell the king of Israel what was going on, what the king of Syria was thinking. And the king of Syria became so frustrated until he held me. And he said, that now I wonder who in this camp is not for us, but for Israel. And that was a young man that said, well, well king, you know, what it is, is the prophet Elisha, he's going telling the king of Israel what you say in your bed chain. In other words, he's telling the king of Israel what you are saying and what you are thinking. And so the king of Israel decided, so what I'm going to do, I am going to get my army and I'm going to send it to Dover. That's why Elisha was at that time. So he had his horses and his chariots go to Dalton and surrounded the city because he wanted to apprehend Elisha. So let's read here. Now, and when the servant of the man of God, Gehazi, I was telling him, in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. And I'm going to start with the 14th verse. Therefore, the king of Syria, he sent horses and chariots and great hosts, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servants, and his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So Gehazi, I was the servant, he was saying, Elisha, what are we going to do? Okay, what are, what are we going to do? 
all these horses and chariots have surrounded the entire city. So what are we going to do? See, because he saw that they were not numbered. And notice in the 16th verse, and Elisha answered, Fear not, but they that be with us are more than they that be with thee. Let's this, 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 this soak in just for a minute. Elisha answered his servant and said that they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So obviously, Elisha was seeing something that his servant behaved I couldn't see. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about, I want to give you a principle so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Now notice in these 17 verses. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And so, before Elisha prayed, the angels were already there. But the servant couldn't see it. The servant couldn't see it until Elisha, Elisha rather, prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes, allow him to see what I can see. So when he prayed, God opened Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, opened his eyes so that he could see what was already there. In other words, before Elisha had already prayed, before he prayed, the angel was already there. He could see him, but the servant couldn't. So I'm saying that God, after the prayer of Elisha, opened the man's eyes so that he could see what was already there. So he was blind to what Elisha could see. So you are blind to things that God wants you to see. And only God has the power to open your eyes to be able to see what's already there. God wants you to get to the point where you can see that he's already there. God wants you to get to the point where you can see that Jesus is already there. And God wants you to get to the point where you understand that the Holy Ghost is already there. God that you can't see. And you won't be able to see them unless God open your eyes. So can you see the necessity of being born again? Can you see how important it is to be converted? Because prior to being converted, you just simply can't see. Prior to being born again, you just simply can't see and understand the things of God. But the day, the hour, the minute that you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you are able to see things that you could not see. I'm talking about 15 minutes before you were born again. Let's just put it this way. If I was born again on Wednesday at 5 o'clock in the afternoon or evening, at 4.30, Prior to 5 o'clock, I could not see what I could see at 5 being born again. Amen. Amen. What happened? A miracle took place. Lord. Lord. Did you not and can't you comprehend that salvation in and of itself is a miracle that only the hand of God can do? He said, hey, if you call me God, yeah. I'll answer yeah. you. Began to curl their hair on your head. What? You picked you up your turn around, yeah. you placed your feet upon solid ground. I'm talking about my God is able to do the miraculous. Yeah. 
God is good. So don't be frustrated. And don't get all upset when you're talking to somebody that's saying that there is no such thing as God. There is no such thing as Jesus. Don't get all upset with them because the Holy Spirit in you is telling you that they are spiritually blind. They don't know me as you, as you know me. You know me because you allowed me to do a miracle in you. It's a miracle. You can't do a miracle yourself. And you ain't guaranteed a miracle either. Amen. But when you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you permit him to come in and do a miracle. And all of a sudden now, things become clear. You can see what you could not see yesterday. So now, let me back up. Everybody that comes into this world, every infant, every child, come into this world, you're spiritually blind. And it's going to stay there. It's going to stay there until you do something about it. It's designed to stay there for the rest of your life. And that's why a lot of folks are not going to heaven. Because they did not deal with the issue while they were in the earth. And thinking about, talking about, there is more than one way to get to heaven. Mm. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. You ought to be thankful that God gave us one way. Amen. Amen. Jesus. <laughs> you, ought to, you ought to be thankful that he gave you one. And you mean to tell me with your small self you can figure out another one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you? Right. When Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man can get to the Father himself, but I am me? And you, you, you mean to tell me he's smart enough to out, out, outsmart him? Mm. Right. Oh no, honey. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's either his way or the highway, baby. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. So you need him to open your eyes. Now, most of us, all of us rather, can testify to the fact that you can see things different now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Why? Why do you see different now? If I could, if I could do this. The glasses represents a veil. Okay? I'm just using this as an example. When Jesus Christ came into my heart, the first thing that he had to do was remove the veil. He removed it. I didn't have the power to do it. The only thing that I had to do, the only thing that I, was necessary for me to do was just ask him. I didn't know about the veil right, right, right. until later on. Right. Mm -hmm. See, he did some things to me that it, it took me years to find out what he did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say it again. Yeah. When I got born again, I didn't really realize that he removed a veil from off of my eyes. I didn't realize that till later on in life. But even when he removed them at that time, I could still see things different. But I didn't have a label to it until later. So wait a minute. He came in and he removed something that is called spiritual blindness. But I didn't figure that out till later. That's how I call it necessary to go to church. All right. Oh, y'all ain't here, what I'm saying. That's how I call it. You don't take a child out of school after the first grade. That's right. You don't take a child out of school after the second grade. You don't take him out of school after the fifth grade. Why? You got to let him run his course. Because if you take him out, there are going to be some things that he should have learned in the fifth grade that's going to affect him when he get older. So that's how come it's necessary to go to church so that you can figure out what happened to you at new birth. What the wrong to you at the time of God. Are you listening to me? It takes years to figure this out. You don't figure it out all in one day. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. And we're going to start with the third verse. Second Corinthians, we'll start with the third verse. But if our gospel be here, it is here to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world 
the God of this world is talking about Satan. It's not talking about Jesus and God. The God of this world is talking about Satan. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And notice in the fifth verse. For we preach not ourselves, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord and ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. Notice in the sixth verse, is very important. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, it took the power, the light, and the mercy of God to come in to you by way of preaching so that, everybody look at me, so that the blind will be removed so that you can see. Without Christ, these gonna stay. And as long as the blind will stay, you cannot comprehend God. And you you will be among them that's saying there ain't no such thing as God. Mm -hmm. Everybody going to hell. You believe that there is a devil? No, yeah. Halloween is a, 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 a good holiday. <laughs> Yeah. We're not going to deal with this. See, but as long as these are there, you cannot comprehend God. He has to come in, Lauren, and through the new birth, you don't even realize what he's doing. He removed them, but you do know something happened. Yes. But, to, but to the devil, what happened? It takes years to find out. So you got to go from one all the way to 12 and do some do probably extra four. <laughs> Are you listening to me? That's how the world looks at being educated, right? That's right yeah. So the fact of the matter is with, with God, you get in there and the Bible says that you know he that endures to the end shall be saved. So in other words, you don't take no sabbaticals from the church. Right. Because if you do the devil gets in and guess what? That what removed can be put back. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. That's what God removed. You can allow it to come back. And the Bible said that you'll be in worse shape than you were before they removed the first time. Right. So honey, it's on you. It's on you. So if you want them to, the blindness to stay off, Walk with God and do what's right in the sight of God. Is that okay? Amen. Let's go with one more person. We close. Is that okay? Let's go to Ah First John. First John, and we are look at the second chapter. First John, the second chapter. John, the second chapter, and we're still eight verse. And again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shall be. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, knoweth not whether he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Is there? And people don't know it. Oh, it's, 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 it's that. And, you know, prior to me pastoring, I didn't hear a message taught on this a lot. 
I've been pastoring now for a long time. I've been going to church for a long time. But I look back and I, I didn't hear a lot of messages preached about their spiritual lives. See, people have to realize that then, you know, you come into this world and, 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 and the subject of God is falling into you. And I know the Bible talks about it in Genesis, the first chapter, around the 28th verse, that we're made and created in the image and in the likeness of God. But how come God is so far into us then? How come, I mean, if, if God created us, why is it that so many people are against God? Why? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What? How could that be? He ain't mean. He's kind. He's generous. He's long-suffering. He's wonderful. But why is it that so many people hate him? Why? The, question, the answer to the question is, spiritual blindness has not been dealt with. Now, when you get born again, you don't dislike him anymore. Right. Right. No. You love him. You want to run the church. Yes, yes. You want a hard Christian. Oh. What, what happened? <laughs> what happened? The blind us. Where are we going? Oh. Now you can see. Yes. Give the Lord a hand, somebody. Amen. Is that okay? Yes. 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 Amen.